driven them to seek to fulfill these lusts. And more than that, you are not in control. Your lusts are in control when you remain in your physical condition. We need to take refuge in the eternal realm every time we slip back from the spiritual connection to who we are on the other side. We need to run towards Jesus Christ again. We need to seek Him afresh so that we remain in our spiritual cycle. I want you to go to Romans 8.20 with me, please. Where it says in Hebrews 9.14 that our consciousness needs to be purged. What is referred to is the fact that we need to have our carnal motivation propelled by carnal lust. We need to have that removed by a new type of lust for the things that exist on the other side. If our motivation, if our desire is for the things that exist on the other side, then our consciousness or our awareness has been healed. We've been healed from the disease of the physical condition because we're not controlled by our lust, but rather by Jesus Christ who directs us along the path to safety. Romans 8.20 For the creature, the physical being, the person in the physical condition, was made subject, was subordinated to vanity. 3153, please, in Strong's. Matayotes. As you exist in your physical condition, as you exist in your innate natural condition, as you exist in the condition that you were born in that is natural you are subordinated to inutility which means to uselessness you are of no use to yourself when it comes to the subject of deliverance and salvation it speaks of waste and unprofitability. It speaks of transientness and moral depravity. You're lost. In essence, the best word that they could have translated Matthew Pace as would be moral depravity. That when you're in your physical condition, you are subordinated to your moral depravity where you go and what you do in your life is determined by your moral depravity, by your hunger to fulfill your lusts. And that you have no control over your lusts. That is what it indicates in Romans 8.20 that as you exist in your physical condition, you have no control over your lusts. That in fact, your lusts are ruling you. You are ruled by your lusts. And what is a lust? This desire that is in your soul that comes from a diseased condition of that very soul. Why, why is it a diseased condition of the soul? Because you don't have a life. You don't have the abundant life. You are buffeted by your own circumstances not being able to control yourself nor discipline yourself that your loss have rule in your life and that you are under the old administration of the law of sin and death and it keeps you bound it keeps you bound in that state I wonder if you hear what I'm saying 
as long as you're in the physical condition, as long as you have not seen Christ and submitted to Him, your lusts are going to rule you and you remain in your lack. You remain oppressed. That is, you're buffeted in your circumstances. You don't have the new thinking. You can't control your life. You have no discipline in your life. You can't lead yourself where you want to go because you're ruled by things that are outside of your control, which is your lust. Because we are made, we are physically made in our mother's womb to be subordinated to our moral depravity. Our moral depravity is our first priority in our lives and there is no need to pretend that it's otherwise. If you live in Christ, that is your lot. Let me just give it to you in a nutshell so that you can really understand what I'm trying to say to you this morning. In effect, what I am saying to you is that the New Testament means that we know Christ, that we can see Him, that we have experienced Christ, that we know that there are also exist on the other side that liberate us from this physical condition that we are a changed personality we don't remain the same are you tired of being who you are? are you tired? are you worn? are you old? it's because you are under the old administration of the law of sin and death which dictates your quality of life your lack and how you live your life and what you think of what drives you onwards at the expense of your own health and the health of those around you. The New Testament means that our essence, our makeup, what we have made up of is changed. That the reality of our existence, our true condition is changed. And because our true condition is changed, our awareness is changed. I wonder who's there with me. Your awareness doesn't change and then your nature changes. Your nature has to change first and then afterwards. After your nature has changed because you're in the New Testament, then your awareness will change. You will have new thinking. You will have a new purpose in life you will have a new direction in life. When our awareness is changed, we say that our awareness has been healed by Jesus Christ. Let me just repeat it for you, please. Our essential nature, our true nature is changed and because of that change, our awareness is different. Our awareness becomes changed. I want you to hear me well. I don't want you to miss anything. For our awareness to change. For me to stop looking at the things that are in front of me. And instead of to be thinking and to be focusing on the things that exist on the other side, for my consciousness to change from the physical to the spiritual, my nature has to change first. We're in a bind. These are the shackles that bind us. And you need to know what is it that breaks this cycle that keeps us locked into this physical condition. I wonder if you're, you're seeing here in what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, as long as you are in your physical condition, you can't see. The question is, if you can't see, how can you be changed? 
Because a change can only be introduced into your life if you first see it. But your awareness doesn't change until your nature changes. Therefore, you are locked into the fact of your lack. You are locked into your physical condition because your physical condition says you can't see. And if you can't see, how, you can, how can you come out of your lack? Because for you to see, you need to be changed. You're in a bind, you're in a catch, you can't come out, you're in the grips of the oppressor. What does it take to break the cycle? Our nature has to change for us to see. But as long as you are in your physical condition, you cannot see. I'm asking you, how can you break out of this cycle? How can you approach God? As long as your lusts are ruling you, you will never have a chance. You will remain in your lack, in the fact that you can't see, in your physical condition. What breaks you out of this cycle is your first glimpse into the eternal realm. This is why the glimpse is so very crucial and important to your future life. What breaks you out is the fact that you need to make a decision in your life. That you are going to somehow do whatever it takes in your power to approach God so that God can show you the first declaration in himself. How can you get out of this cycle that you're trapped in? The first declaration. It only takes one declaration and your submission to that declaration no matter how difficult what he shows you may be or may seem to you at the time that you can be persuaded to follow Jesus Christ by what he in effect shows you that exists on the other side. Christ has to begin the process of change in our awareness. And this begins by the declaration. The declaration begins the process of the changing of our nature. But if you don't get beyond the declaration, you are sealed in your physical condition. Why? Because it's the spiritual connection that confirms you and verifies you in the knowledge that he has shown to you in himself. You can't see Christ in your own capability. And if God does not want to reveal himself to you, you can seek him for the rest of your life and you will never find him. But that's not the God that I know. I know that when you seek him, he said that you will find him. So you have to start by seeking him to allow him to be clear to you and when he does, please submit to him. That is the only thing that can get you out of this cycle of being trapped in your lusts. I'm in Romans 8.20 For the creature who we were created as in this life by being linked to our mother's womb it's subordinate to moral dep depravity not willingly, not, not because we want it to be that way but because that is the way it is that is the system that we have inherited and the only way out 
of being controlled by your own moral depravity, the only way out is to seek God. And your physical condition, verse 21, the physical existence needs to be liberated, needs to be delivered from the bondage of this corruption, of this decay that is destroying our life. What I'm saying is that if you don't know Jesus Christ, you are driven, you are controlled by your loss. In fact, that you are shackled to these loss and they have you bound to the situation that you are living in. Your situation, the people around you are not going to change. You have to change yourself for your situation to change. The worst thing is to be caught up in the search for the satisfaction of these lusts. Do you know what that spells? The fact that you are in your physical condition and that you are subordinated to your lust indicates that in your natural self you are not free to seek Christ. No matter how, how I preach it to you you will always prefer your lusts over Christ. That's the condition that you are existing in. When you are in the physical condition, the circumstance probably defines who you are. All your activities, if you just bear with me a moment, because I'm not finished with this section. When you are existing outside of the New Testament, when you haven't come into the New Testament, what does this mean? Does it mean that you are like equal to other people? That everybody is the same? Does it make you feel happy that way? When you are in the physical condition, this circumstance of your lack properly defines who you are. It properly defines, it determines your activities and it determines every aspect of your life which are propelled by your desire and your search to fulfill these lusts. Your physical condition binds you to your lust and bars you from seeking God. When you are healed from the physical condition by the spiritual connection resulting in reversal of nature, you can say that your awareness is cleansed. When it says in Hebrews 9.14 that your consciousness is cleansed or purged, it's not just referring to the fact that your focus is not your lusts. There is an added dimension to this. It's referring to the fact that your focus is not your lusts, but rather the things that exist on the other side, the works that exist in the eternal realm. The spiritual connection is the only way our minds can function in the works that exist on the other side. Our nature has to be reversed for us to be able to look above, which can only happen if we are spiritually connected to the original spiritual creation. An expanded mind is a healed mind. 
and this is to have in our body of knowledge the reality and experience of the spiritual ages outside of a spiritual connection and an expanded mind it is impossible to understand true Christian teaching because it shadows what exists in the spiritual ages and if you don't have access to these works you will not understand the teaching the physical teaching and the commandments that are physical cannot cleanse your consciousness and your awareness it takes Christ please go with me to Hebrews 9.9 9. the tabernacle, anything that's physical referring to the first tabernacle in verse 8 a physical expression, a physical teaching which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service complete as pertaining to the consciousness or awareness shadows can't make you free symbols do not make you free it's the reality of what the symbols represent that makes you free Galatians 3.21 For if there had been a law given which could have given life the abundant life regeneration the taste of the original spiritual creation very righteousness pleasing God could have been by the law but it can't because we don't need something that doesn't have life in it There is no power in the physical word and teaching, only in the living word Christ. The word itself does not contain power, is not able to purify our awareness, our thoughts, and keep us fixed on Christ. Hebrews 3 8, please. I'm not quite finished. Hebrews 3 and 8 Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness your fathers tempted me proved me and saw my works 40 years wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do always uh, roam from safety, truth and virtue in their hearts and they have not known by experience my ways, by progress, the spiritual way. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Look at this, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart, a hurtful heart, of untrustworthiness. When God shows you the declaration, you do not submit to it in departing from the living God the fact that it says departing from the living God meant that you were once there and he says don't depart from him don't see him in the declaration and then resist what he is showing to you 
it is our connection to the Rima that allows us to have a healed mind without this connection without this submission to what Jesus Christ shows us we cannot have a healed mind this healed mind the fact that our mind is expanded allows us to continue to follow Jesus Christ it sustains us this expanded mind the fact, the, the fact that we can continue to function in what we see on the other side sustains us it allows us to continue with Jesus Christ I want to refer you quickly to Hebrews 1.3 without dwelling too much on it Jesus Christ being the brilliant radiance of this glory the same as God the foundation and what sustains all by the rima of the move and the ability that comes from this move I'm translating directly for you we are sustained in this expanded mode we are sustained in this abundant life where we have a healed mind by this Rima notice in, in the verse where it says by the word it's Rima by the works that were created out of nothing in the eternal realm that is what sustains us in the abundant life it is how we remain in this sustained expanded mind over our lifetimes because of the fact of the existence of the spiritual works on the other side the question of when these works were performed is answered in Hebrews 1.3 where it says Rima it gives us the context and the time zone that these works were accomplished in Turn me please to 1 Peter 1 19 and 20 Note Just to review for you Hebrews 9.14 says our consciousness is cleansed by the work of Christ by the blood of Christ which indicates the beginning of the process which is linked to his work Hebrews 9.14 says our consciousness is cleansed by the fact that he shed his glory to begin the process of our spiritual creation and the fact that he completed that process our consciousness is cleansed by the fact that we can be connected to that process the question of when is answered in Hebrews 1.3 the question of how is answered also in Hebrews 1.3 where it says that Christ is the foundation and that foundation pointing to the Rima also in Hebrews 1 3 1 Peter 1 19 with the precious blood of Christ it doesn't say the blood of Jesus at the physical crucifixion but rather the blood of the eternal spirit Jesus Christ 
as indicated by Hebrews 9.14 as a lamb without blemish and without spot again reinforcing the fact that he's speaking about Christ the eternal spirit not about the physical crucifixion of Jesus we are not redeemed with but we are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ indicating the shedding of his glory which began the process of our spiritual creation who is with me? as a lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained turn to 4267 please Progen Osco from 4253 and 1097 4253 is pro 4 in front of prayer and Genosco 1097 The word is to experience beforehand. I wonder if anybody's here. Are we just sleeping? Wishing? What? Getting tired and sleepy maybe? Look, look at the verse. Look, look at the verse. See what it says. Read the verse become alive in what you see get excited about what you see because this is where I have been heading the whole time what does it say? I wait an answer what does it say? what was it that this Jesus whom we preach experienced beforehand and before what did he experience it it's in the verse look at it don't look at me look at the verse what did this Jesus whom we preach experience beforehand and Paul not willing that anybody should miss it says before Christ experience before before that's what he says look at the verse wake up my brethren nobody see it yet what do you see something happened in verse 19 in verse 20 he said what happened in verse 19 was experienced by Jesus Christ before 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 what somebody read the verse me please before the foundation of what took place from verse 19 come on what took place beforehand that Jesus experienced before the foundation of the world the shedding of his blood so how could it be the physical crucifixion of Jesus Christ when it was before the foundation of the world wake up my people wake up it's there for you to see that the shedding of blood by Jesus Christ this precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot that he experienced beforehand before the foundation of the world the shedding of his blood where you are sitting therefore 
the shedding of blood, the precious blood of Christ, which means if there had to be blood, there had to be shedding of blood, it indicates that there was another crucifixion that took place before the foundation of the physical world, which is a spiritual work that I've been speaking to you about that you have been missing. It indicates without any shadow of doubt by Peter and by Paul that the shedding of the blood took place before Jesus Christ was physical before he was physically birthed into this world by St. Mary that there was a crucifixion that took place before anything was physical if the crucifixion if the shedding of blood took place by Christ before there was anything that was physical then it had to be that it was spiritual that there was a spiritual crucifixion by God but what does this signify? this signifies what I've been saying to you all along it signifies that where there were spiritual works that took place before the creation of, of the physical universe and those works include the spiritual crucifixion of Christ which indicates the shedding of his glory so that he could become our prototype Is it that I'm loving you to sleep or that you're already asleep to start? I, I, want, I want to know, you know, who is, who is at fault? It says very clearly in here, from verse 18, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain behavior received by tradition from your fathers, you used to go to church and you used to receive the first, your first communion and the last supper and you were baptized in water that's the tradition of your fathers that the church needs to put behind them because they don't know who they are in Jesus Christ the church is having an identity crisis we don't know that Jesus Christ is a risen Lord that he's alive and we do not behave in our lives as if he were alive it says it here you know, Peter is saying that, I want to know, why is it that Peter did not speak clearer than this? Because there is nothing clearer, nothing can be made clearer than what I'm saying or than what Peter said. It's not the reshuffling of the words, it's your mind that needs to be expanded. Your mind that needs to be liberated from the physical world. Your mind needs to be cleansed. Your lust needs to be put away. It says it very clearly. It's, I'm not going to move from this till I'm finished. Till all my time is run out. It says here in 1 Peter 1 18. Since you know that you are not delivered by perishable things that are physical, like the physical crucifixion of Jesus Christ and the physical blood of Jesus Christ, but rather by something that took place before the foundation of the world it says it very clearly in the King James Version English for you to see who verily was foreordained before the founding of the world it says it very clearly here it says it very clearly Jesus experienced beforehand before he says it twice not once because the Greek word that was translated as foreordained is really experienced beforehand so he says before twice in case you miss the first time you definitely cannot miss it the second time and we've been missing it all the time it says who was experienced beforehand what? this suffering this spirit 
which was suffering by God himself Jesus Christ the eternal spirit that he experienced beforehand before the founding of the world what? the spiritual crucifixion the shedding of his blood when it speaks of blood you must understand that it's speaking about the shedding of that blood of the spilling of the blood it's not that God loves to see blood it's not that God loves to see people suffering and spilling their blood on the ground it is just a shadow for us to see that it represents something that is much deeper than what we see in the physical realm in the physical crucifixion and that it refers to something that took place millions of years speaking in terms of men millions of years before the physical creation when it says but with the precious blood of Christ we need to put a time frame a time zone a context in relation to time as to when the blood of Christ was spilled so that you can understand if it was the physical blood or the spiritual blood whether it was the physical blood of Jesus Christ or what that represented in the reality of things which was the shedding of glory by God so that he could become our prototype having offered himself up as a sacrifice being without spot or blemish because he was the only one that could guarantee our spiritual creation there was nobody else there who else was there? you want to count the angels now? there was no one else there who could create out of nothing the devil, the oppressor the angel of wrath cannot create out of nothing he needs something to create something with that is why he needs you he needs you to create his mischief out of God is not like that he can produce out of nothing Amen. and he can multiply your life out of nothing Amen. but you can't see it because you're limited to the physical realm and you want to know how you want to make ends meet we are not concerned with the physical world and the lack that is in this world because we have access to all the abundance of the glory of God where there is no lack if all you are seeing is your lack then you are blind to the fact of the reality of Jesus Christ and you are not a Christian I am not the one yes and I may say things that sometimes cut to the bone that cut to your heart that hurt you and that convict you and perhaps even scandalize you make you offended I only say what is necessary for you to hear and only if I have permission from my boss to say what I say I'm not moving from 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20 I'm not ready to move from it yet because maybe someone here still does not understand what I'm talking about I've been saying from the beginning of the teaching that I intend to prove to you suppose I prove to you that God did works before the material creation do you know that Jesus Christ did in fact work works before he began the six day physical creation do you know that? if you don't know it then this verse should absolutely convict you and prove to you what I'm saying because it says it without any shadow of absolutely no doubt whatsoever eternally it is proven we are not redeemed or ransomed or delivered by perishable things that are physical by physical works we cannot be saved the church cannot save you 
by the physical words that we speak in church. It can only be done. You're only ransomed. You're only redeemed. You're only delivered. You're only saved. By the suffering of God Himself. As He shed His glory in order to be the spiritual works that ended in your spiritual creation. Can you be delivered? It takes your connection to those very works. And when it says the precious blood of Christ, you must understand that the suffering of God in the shedding of His glory is intricately bound and linked with His spiritual works. When we say one, we say the other. So when it says the precious blood of Christ, it means also the spiritual works that Christ did before the physical creation who is here. What have I been teaching you all along? Spoon feeding you about the two elements of the New Testament meal. Why do you think we've been dwelling on it so long? For you to understand that when it says the blood of Christ, it doesn't really mean just the blood of Christ, but also what the blood of Christ was for. What was it for? That's the question. What was the blood of Christ for? For the spiritual works that exist on the other side. Thank you. Yes. It is crucial that you understand That what Christ experienced, according to 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20, what Christ experienced was a suffering that is implied in verse 19 when it says the precious blood of Christ. Not speaking about the physical crucifixion of Jesus Christ, but speaking about what? About the spiritual crucifixion of God himself since he offered himself to become our prototype in order to guarantee our spiritual creation which in turn would guarantee our deliverance and our salvation from this thing that we call life there is irrefutable evidence in 1 Peter 1 18 to 20 that it is not the physical crucifixion of Jesus Christ and those who say so are lost, are lost in the darkness of symbols and shadows and in their ignorance and who do not choose to know different because they refuse the truth when it is offered to them even in the physical expression. All of those who reject that it is not the physical crucifixion that it is in fact the spiritual crucifixion that really counts to our salvation and deliverance are in fact stuck in shadows, symbols and darkness and if they re refuse and reject to come out of it that they will in fact see Satan and be joined with him for all time when they depart this life because they have an identity crisis they are not confessing that Jesus Christ came in the flesh and they are confessing by their own ignorance that they do not understand the New Testament that they do not understand how God blesses his people First Peter 1 19 refers to the precious blood of Christ even if you refuse to accept that it says Christ and not Jesus and you say that Jesus was God which I agree with you because Jesus was everything that God was and I confess it that he was that way even while he was there that he was always connected to who he was on the other side because he moves back and forth in the spiritual ages and when he was here he was connected with himself in all the ages if you don't know from verse 19 
And I guess you can argue it in your ignorance that it refers to the physical crucifixion. What about the fact of verse 20, where it says, who was verily foreordained? I guess you can tell me, well, it was established that it would happen. I guess you could tell me that. And to you, I have nothing to say. But if you check the Greek word, you will understand that 40 to 67 is, in fact, progenosco. From two words, pro and genosco. Progenosco. That Greek word means, and you can check it, not just to know that it would happen, but in fact to know it because he experienced it before the founding of the physical universe. If you desire not to accept, it's totally a matter for you to decide because I cannot help you anymore. There's nothing more that I can say or do to indicate to you that it is not about the physical crucifixion of Jesus Christ but according to Hebrews 9.13, Hebrews 9.9 9, and 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20 that it's not the physical crucifixion but the fact that Jesus Christ had to shed his glory being God so that he could come to know and experience all our weaknesses so that he could plot out our creation based on what we would need to be connected to as we existed in this life so that we could be delivered from our own selves if you still do not accept it well there's nothing further I can do why didn't Peter speak any plainer for us to understand because these were the words that were given to him this was a topic that he was to write on having been led to it by Jesus Christ to me it can't be made any plainer as long as you can see into the other realm it cannot be made any plainer as to what Peter was speaking on it is how Christ said it to him are we now going to instruct Christ as to how Peter should have written? Coming quickly into the conclusion. As the moon is the reflection of the sun, so are we a dim reflection of Christ Jesus, the true light. So are we a candle that must burn out to become the true light. Our physical expression is just a dim shadow of the spiritual work that exists in the spiritual ages. No matter how great our work is, no matter how miraculous our work may seem to be, it still is just a shadow of what exists in the eternal realm. The glory of God is never anything physical but far outstrips and outreaches anything that we do as physical beings. I'd like to return for the conclusion please to 1 Timothy 1. All turn please. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Knowing this, knowing this with our minds, because we have been persuaded of the things that exist on the other side, the law is not made for the righteous. The law is not made for the one who is pleasing to God 
who is in the experience of the original spiritual creation which is also the definition for regeneration whereas righteousness refers to the fact that we are in fact right with God that we are in fact pleasing to God that we have satisfied God by the experience of the original spiritual creation regeneration refers to the fact of this experience righteousness refers to the fact that we are righteous which means that we are in presently the experience of the original spiritual creation the law the physical expression, the tabernacle what the law gave to Moses for the people of Israel the letters the writings of the prophets all of this is under what is passing out to us in a physical way if you are functioning in free thinking if your mind is liberated and if your mind can function in the things that exist in the eternal realm then the physical expression is not for you the physical law is not for you the physical teachings of Jesus Christ is not for you why? because you have a relationship with Jesus Christ having been established in the New Testament by Jesus Christ and therefore you are under higher demands by Jesus Christ and by God I will be it. if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ if you are in your spiritual cycle if you are responding positively, continuously to what Jesus Christ shows you then what is written and the words I say is not for you it is however for you if you are not in your spiritual cycle why is that so? why does God make sure that there is something physical that others can receive? one, it's for them to know that in their own abilities they have not got a chance but there is also a higher reality why God gives us physical teachings why God speaks through other people in physical ways there is another reason the reason being that this physical expression allows you an opportunity to come out of the trap that you are in it is to indicate to you that there is a way out and that this way is Jesus Christ and since I can know him and function in the things that I see on the other side expressing it physically therefore you can also function in those same very things not my things but your own works in Jesus Christ the law is made for those who do not submit to the declaration these physical teachings are meant to restrict you from harming the righteous from following the Lord's way the physical teachings are given to the church to keep the unrighteous in line so that they do not hinder those who know Christ from doing their work it is a hindering law to prevent you from doing the things that are in your lust and to indicate to you when you are in those things that you are falling short of God's intention in your life that is the simplest definition of sin but I need to tell you that God is not into this thing called remission of sin rather he is into this fact of the liberation from our old thinking and in the liberation from our physical condition what God's desire is is that we be free he's not there to punish us when we fail he's there to free us from this failing 